Today is a great day to learn something new. I am Aladef Intong and today we're going to learn about inverse functions. First, let's define what an inverse function is. An inverse function reverses the operation done by a particular function. In other words, whatever function does, the inverse function reverses it. Two functions are considered inverse if and only if. Every domain of a function can be found on the range of the other and vice versa. So how do we get the inverse function? To get the inverse of a function, let these five steps be your guide. First, replace f of x with y. Replace every x with y and every y with x. Solve for y. Denote the inverse as f inverse of x. To check if the answer is correct, apply composition of functions. Let's try some simple exercises to get an idea of what an inverse function is. As you can see, the position of x and y are interchange. The variable y takes the place of x and x takes the place of y. The function is also denoted as an inverse by placing the exponent of negative 1 on the upper right of f, which is read as f inverse of x. The same steps from the previous example is being followed on this one. The values of the x and y are being swapped. After interchanging the numbers, denote the function as inverse by putting exponent negative 1 above the letter a. Now that we have an idea on how an inverse function works, let's practice some examples with the steps as our guide. First, Let's replace f of x with y. Next, let's swap x and y. Let's solve for y. To do this, we need just y on the side and we must get rid of this too. As you can see, 3 is added on the right side. When we transpose it, we will subtract it on the left side, from positive 2 to negative 2. We still have to get rid of the numerical coefficient of y, which is 3, so that only y will be left. Thus, we will divide 3 on both sides. The solution doesn't in here. To denote that this is an inverse of the original function, we must replace y with f inverse of x. This is now the final answer. In order to check if the answer is correct, apply the composition of function, wherein x must equal to x. To better understand it, let's try checking our answer in example 1. Let's write f circle inverse of f to denote that this is a composition of function. Substitute the answer to the x in f of x. Multiply 3 to x minus 2 over 3. To do this, we can simply cancel out 3, leaving us with only x minus 2 plus 2. Let's solve the remaining numbers by adding negative 2 and positive 2, which answers 0. All that's left now is only x. Since x is equal to x, we have confirmed that our answer is correct. We could also check our answer by substituting the original function to the x in our inverse function. Both solutions should still arrive the same, wherein x should equal to x. This is to ensure that your answers are correct since there are some instances that both answer won't give out the same answer in the end. Here is another example. Let's follow the same steps in solving this one. First, 
Let's replace f of x with y. Interchange x and y. Let's solve for y. To do so, we will divide 32 on both sides so that only y will be left on the right side. Again, to denote that this is an inverse of original function, we must replace y with f inverse of x. This is now the final answer. To check our answers, apply composition of function wherein both sides must have an answer of x. Let's write f circle inverse of f. To denote that, it's a composition of function. Substitute the answer to the x in f of x. Distribute 32 to x over 32. To do this, we can simply cancel out their common factor 32. Now, only x is left. x is equal to x. Therefore, our answer is correct. So let's check it again. Let's put f of x as an input of f inverse of x. Divide 32 by 32. Since 32x divided by 32 leaves us with only x. Hence, our inverse is correct. Example number 3. Replace f of x with y. Replace x for every y and y for every x. Next, let's distribute 2 on both sides. Multiplying 2 to x will give us an answer of 2x while 3y minus 1 over 2 multiplied to 2 will leave only 3y minus 1. To do this, simply cancel out their common factor which is 2. This leaves us with only 2x equals 3y plus 1. Now, we can transfer 1 to the other side. Since 1 is subtracted on the right side, it will be added to the left side from negative 1 to positive 1. Divided both sides by 3 so that only y will remain on the right side. Finally, replace y with f inverse of x to denote that this is an inverse function. Let's figure out if our answer is correct. Substitute the final answer to the x in the given function. Multiply 32 to 2x plus 1 over 3 by cancelling out the common factor which is 3. Now, we have 2x plus 1 minus 1 as numerator. Let's simplify it by adding positive 1 to negative 1 which results in 0. Only 2x is left as numerator. x is equal to x, therefore our answer is correct. Divide 2 into x. This leaves us with only x as an answer. Since x is equal to x, thus we can say that our answer is correct. First, let's put f of x as the input of f inverse of x. Let's distribute 2 to the parentheses by cancelling out the greatest common factor. Between 2 and 3x minus 1 over 2, which is 2, leaving us with only 3x minus 1 plus 1. By adding negative 1 to positive 1, it will result to 0. Thus, only 3x will be left. Divide 3x to 3, which gives us an answer of only x. Hence, we can confirm that our answer is correct. Next, let's try finding the inverse of a quadratic function. Replace f of x with y. Swap all the y with x and x with y. Make sure that only y remains on the right side. To do this, let's transpose positive 11 to the left side making it negative 11. To get rid of the exponent of y, 
Let's find the square root of both sides. After that, we can replace y with f inverse of x. Of course, let us not forget to check our answers. First, let's substitute the answer to the x in the function. In squaring the square root of x minus 11, simply cancel out the radical sign with only x minus 11 left. Simplify it by adding negative 11 to positive 11, leaving us with only x. Therefore, our answer from a while ago is correct, since only x is left. Let's replace the values of x in f inverse of x with x squared plus 11. Next, we will add the similar terms which are positive 11 and negative 11, which give us an answer of 0. By doing so, only x squared will be left. Lastly, let's find the square root of x squared. Remember that when finding the square root of an x squared, variable will simply cancel out the radical and the exponent of 2. Why? It's because the inverse operation to squaring a number is finding its square root. Finding the square root of x squared is the same as asking what numbers or variable give an answer of x squared when squared. Replace f of x with y. Interchange x and y. Transpose 2 to the other side so that only 2 over 5 y will remain on the right side. To eliminate the 5 on the denominator, we'll multiply both sides by 5. Multiply 5 to x plus 2. In multiplying 2 over 5y to 5, we can simply cancel out their common factor which is 5. Thus, only 2y is left on the right side. Now, we will divide 2 on both sides so that only y will remain on the right side. Lastly, replace y with f inverse of x to denote that it is an inverse function. Do you think our answer is correct? Let's find out! Substitute the answer to every x of the function. Multiply 2 over 5 to 5x plus 10 over 2. The product is 10x plus 20 over 10. We can still reduce this one by factoring 10x plus 20. To do this, simply take out their common factor which is 10 and divide it to both terms. The answer would be 10 and x plus 2. Next, we'll cancel out 10. Now, we are left with x plus 2 minus 2. Positive 2 added to negative 2 results in 0. With this, only x is left. Since x is the final answer, we can confirm that our inverse is correct. Again, let's put f of x as an input of f inverse of x. Next, let's distribute 5 to the parentheses by multiplying 5 to 2 over 5x which results in 10 over 5x and 5 to negative 2 which gives us negative 10. Now that we have 2x minus 10 plus 10, let's add the similar terms together. Positive 10 added to negative 10 will give us an answer of 0, so only 2x will be left. Let's simplify by dividing 2 to 2x by doing so. It gives us an answer of only x. Therefore, we can say that our inverse is correct. We are finally done. We hope that we've learned our topic well. Thank you for listening. This has been Alidef Intom presenting together with Franz Mariel Gablines for writing the script, Yvonne Alihai for preparing the PowerPoint presentation, 
and Noel the second or Coolio for editing today's video. That will be all. Thank you.